The Old Testament reading for this 12th Sunday after Pentecost, after Pentecost is taken from the book of Proverbs, ninth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beast. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live, and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse, and he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. Here ends the reading of the Old Testament lesson. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him lack nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. The second reading for this morning is from St. Paul's Epistle to the Ephesians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the sixth verse. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not associate with them, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. But when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with all your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Here ends the reading of the epistle.
Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not as the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This is a hard saying. Who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, Do you take offense at this? Then what if I were to say, what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who those were who did not believe and who it was who would betray him. And he said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, Do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Grace, mercy, and peace to you. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and God's children say, Amen. You know, Jesus says, you must eat my body and drink my blood if you are to have life in you. And of course, the life he's talking about is eternal life. And so the question that Christians have asked for centuries is, how do we eat his body and drink his blood? Well, there's one way that seems pretty obvious when we go to the altar and receive the sacrament. Where Jesus himself feeds us his own body and blood in, with, and under the bread and wine. Now people say, how can this be? It's not like a piece of steak or something like that. It's not real blood. That's gross. We wouldn't do that. And yet we do believe that Jesus' body and blood is there. Why do we believe it? Because the Word says it's there. Because Jesus himself says it's there. He says, this is what I give you. And then hearing his word and believing in him, with the Holy Spirit working faith in us, we trust that what he says is true. And then having received Christ this way through our ears, and also this way through our eyes when we read his holy word, we also receive exactly what he says, his body and blood, in, with, and under that bread and wine. It's a miracle. A normal person without faith can't believe it. It seems absurd. That's why so many of the people fell away from Jesus after he talked about these things. How can you believe in God just through some words? How can you receive life just through a little bread and wine? Again, because Jesus says so. And his word is truth. And when we hear his word and the Holy Spirit works faith, again, we have exactly what he says. Eternal life, forgiveness, salvation, blessed gifts of God that no one can buy, but are given to us freely. So how do you do as the Lord says? We just receive in our ears, in our eyes, and even on our tongues when we receive the sacrament, his body and blood, his word of life. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are unworthy recipients of such blessed treasures. We pray that you would strengthen our faith to receive them with joy and gladness. We also pray that when we do come to eat your body and drink your blood in the sacrament, that we do so worthily, trusting those words given and shed for us from you. Again, Lord, we thank you for feeding us with your bread of life, your word and sacrament. In Jesus' name, amen. <coughs> Grace, mercy, and 
peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, why are you here this morning? Why are any of us here this morning? One might argue that I have to be here. It's my calling. But what about you? Don't you have some place better you could be? After all, life is short. We're busy. There's work to do, a buck to be made, grass to mow, now that we've gotten some rain. We could be sitting by the lake, throwing a line into the water. We could be out whacking them all around a beautiful, lush golf course. We could be out going to brunch with our family and friends. <coughs> also be at home sleeping off a hangover, sneaking into the house after being all out all night with someone we hooked up with at the bar. Oh yes, we could be doing all of that and more, <laughs> as so many people do. And while not all of the things I listed off are sin in and of themselves, they are things that can tempt us to sin even if they're not outright sin. So just consider the warning we heard the Apostle Paul give to the Ephesians. He said, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time you have, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord is this. We've heard it for the last two weeks. That you will believe in Him and be saved. And that's why you're here. Unfortunately, even when we are here, it is easy to let the mind wander. To be torn between heaven and earth, light and darkness, between the desires of the flesh and the ears that want to be tickled by novelty, and the spirit which has to wage war against such things. It's all too easy to let the practical needs of the day or the desires of the flesh to get in the way of what God says you really need. And of course, the devil is always there to help lead you astray. And even we, the baptized, are often all too easily led astray. After all, the devil and the wisdom of this world tells us that an hour and a half is quite a time investment. And for what? The devil chides. We don't have to be here that long, do we? And yet, Faith answers, saying, all day long is not too long to receive what the Lord is giving out. For what Jesus gives us is nothing less than the promise that sin will not rule in our lives. Death will not destroy us. The devil will not have us. Christ's words convince us that whatever the world has to offer is nothing compared to the treasures that we receive here. The temporary pleasures of this world, which are so enticing, will only lead to our death. But what Christ offers, those who would walk in His light and hear His word and consume Him, is nothing less than the very bread of life itself, the words of eternal life from heaven to you. Just as Jesus told his disciples, the gathered Jews, the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. When Jesus said this, he was letting all who hear his words know that he came for this purpose, to give his own life. Indeed, his own sinless flesh to be sacrificed in exchange for the life of the world. His own perfect life in exchange for our sinful one. In other words, the world would consume the Son of God in an attempt to blot out his Creator and Savior. In what would appear to be the greatest act of futility ever, Christ's body would appear to have been eaten up by the sins of this world. 
consumed, even going down into the bowels of hell itself. It didn't look like victory at first. Jesus lay in the grave surrounded by earth, left to be digested by death. And true enough, this fate would have consumed any other man. But Jesus consumes death through his death. Life comes to us eternally through his eternal living. And death and the grave, which would have done away with Christ forever, a tasty little treat and morsel, instead had to spit our Lord back up. Because of that, death could not keep him down, so brought back into life the grave which would consume us and those we love will not have victory over us either. And why? Because of the word of the Lord. Who eats his flesh and drinks his blood has his life in them by faith. And so we receive this so wonderfully to word and sacrament. Of course, this sounds foolish to the ears of man. Human wisdom can't understand it or grasp it. Just as we heard the Jews arguing against Christ, where they say, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Human reason still struggles with what Christ taught here. Wisdom indicates that it's impossible and weird, creepy, that Jesus would say such things. What kind of person would suggest something like that? Today, they'd be locked up for starting some kind of freakish cult. So this quite naturally leads to the temptation to think that Jesus must only have been speaking symbolically, since no one can literally eat his flesh by taking a bite out of his arm or carving him into little bits. In other words, it's too strange to think that he could be speaking literally at all. Because how can a man accomplish such a bizarre miracle as to allow his flesh to be eaten and his blood drunk? What purpose would Jesus make such a strange and hurt of claim? If he wanted to grow the church, that wasn't the way to do it. Everyone left him. He didn't make followers by spouting such crazy talk. After all, to touch blood for the Jews was a sacrilege. The blood of an animal could not be consumed because the scriptures teach that's what the life is contained. So how much worse and weird would it be to consume human blood? But believe it or not, that's why Christians have been scoffed at down through the centuries, referred to as cannibals and even vampires. And why? Because we have always taught and believed that this is exactly what we receive when we receive the sacrament. Our Lord's body and blood given to us in the bread and in the cup that we share. And yes, if it were some mere man making such claims, he could and should justifiably be locked up for his own good and the good of others. But remember, we're not hearing the teaching of some mere man, but the very words of the Son of God himself. This is Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. That's exactly what the Scriptures have always taught. There is life in the blood of the sacrifice. For in the blood offered in the sacrament, you are given the very sacrificed blood of Christ, which cures us of the sins which would rob us of eternal life itself. These are your words. The old man in us thinks. Trust such things. Not by your own reason or strength. St. Paul makes that very clear in 1 Corinthians. But rather, you can believe it with childlike faith because the Holy Spirit Himself has called you to walk in Christ. If we don't believe this, then why should we believe anything else that Jesus has to say to us? And this is why so many fall away from the truth. Because it is a hard teaching. It's hard to accept. But for those who believe, it is also one which gives us great and incredible comfort. 
just as we learned from the Proverbs. Do not reprove a scoffer, or he'll hate you. Reprove a wise man, and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man, and he will increase in learning. Because, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that's why we're here as well, to be taught, to hear and to be made wise unto salvation through the very words of God himself placed in your ears and before your eyes, to be made righteous through the food which comes from our Lord himself and by which he feeds us, even through the mouth of his servant. This is Jesus said. This is why he calls us to himself. This is why we're here. Trusting his word that whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. That will raise him up on the last day. This is such promising good news. But why would we not want to believe and receive whatever Christ has told us when he gives us such great and precious gifts? But sadly, even we who believe in Christ would often like to think that some great word or sacrifice on our part would at least help us receive his salvation, mercy, and grace. Most of us, especially when we do come to church all the time, would like to think that God keeps track and gives us some extra credit in heaven, or at least some bonus blessings here on earth. Or that by receiving the sacrament and hearing God's word, helping the poor, giving to the church, or sharing the gospel with a stranger, that God would certainly give us some bonus points. Or that these things would at least be some kind of insurance of our eternal salvation. Or at the very least, that by doing all of these works for our neighbor, God would certainly make our life easier here. That kind of talk we could handle. That's something we could strive for, a goal, a prize. That's not the way the Lord works. Instead, all we're told is to believe. Don't look to your good works. Rather, look to the cross. Hear, receive, eat, and drink together as we wait for Christ to raise us up on the last day. For Jesus said, my flesh is flesh and true food. And my blood is true bread. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. <clears throat> See, this is what it means to abide in Christ. To eat his flesh and drink his blood. To hear his word and receive the sacrament. And so we do it. Gladly. Obeying, yes. But hearing and receiving the gospel. That's the purpose for all of this. To have our faith strengthened. So when the devil of this world tempts us and the things around us in this life seem to be falling apart and death seems to be knocking at the door, we have a firm foundation that we can cling to. <coughs> then our faith will not be squashed, but grow stronger through him. But what should we do if we don't feel these things? If we don't hunger and thirst for the very bread of life which Christ offers us? We know the answer. We read it together this morning in the small catechism. What should admonish and encourage a Christian to receive the sacrament frequently? First, both the command and promise of Christ the Lord. And second, his own pressing need, because of which command and promise are given. But what should you do if you're not aware of this need and have no hunger and thirst for the sacrament? Such a person, no better advice can be given than this. First, touch your body to see if you're still flesh and blood. And then second, look around you to see if you're still in this world. And remember that there'll be no lack of sin and trouble to tempt you. And third, remember this, that you will certainly have the devil also around you with his lying and murdering day and night. It won't let you have any peace within or without so, why are we here this morning? To hear the very words of eternal life that no one except Christ can give. To receive the bread of life, which brings Christ's own body and blood given and shed for you to you. So, when the devil casts doubts in your hearts, and when the wisdom of this world makes it seem like everything we believe was 
foolish nonsense. And even when our own acts of sin would strip us of all hope of ever finding peace, we will still remain as the disciples did, with the only words which bring eternal comfort, the words of God's only begotten Son. Hear how Luther preached and comforted his flock as he preached on this text. He said, Christ employs these words here to encourage us to be constant and to be strong and to be of good cheer. Even though death tramples you underfoot and destroys you, the Lord declares that I will still keep you, for I am your life and your true food which preserves you. Thus I will nourish you well, so that you will live forever. Therefore, don't worry. I will raise you up again, so that all will see and bear witness that I live. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ.